Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of KetoSwiss. What actually is a migraine? A migraine is so much more than a headache and it's a very complex disease that can present itself in a myriad of different ways depending on one your genetic background but also the interaction with your personal environment. So migraine is very complex but typically it presents number one I guess symptom is a period of four to 72 hours of moderate to severe headache Typically the headache is one-sided and it is throbbing and severe, sometimes a bit stabbing and, uh, and burning as well. The pain usually is moderate to severe. It's one-sided and throbbing in nature, but migraines also have these uh, visual disturbances, sensory disturbances. They have sickness, nausea associated with it. Movement makes it worse. And in a third of people, you also have a phenomenon called an aura, which is a very strong visual disturbance, but it can also be a motor disturbance that usually is one-sided and can lead all the way to paralysis. People get flickering lights or they don't see parts of the visual field or it can express itself in very different sensory disturbances, also again typically half-sided, but it can go all the way to paralysis of half of the body. So I've had a few patients or know a few patients that thought they had a stroke just because half of their body would go numb, but it's actually part of migraine and that's that aura phase, which can be very scary. Now, migraine comes in different phases. Actually, a premonitory phase that precedes the headache phase, which comes with fatigue, yawning, increased urine, thirst, hunger, food cravings. Um, some people get very irritable, some people get ecstatic, some people get very sad. So there's this period up to 12 hours preceding the attack where the attack has already been triggered, but the pain hasn't started, but you get this warning signs of a migraine coming. And somebody who has had migraine for a long time, they will be able to tell that the migraine is coming just based on these premonitory symptoms. Then we have the headache phase. The headache phase is between four and 72 hours. So between four hours and three days, basically more or less. That's also very typical for migraine. For me, when I had chronic migraines, it would usually be three days on one side of the head and then it would switch over, which would tell me that actually the next attack had started. Then after the migraine is the post strong phase. You can think about this as kind of like the hangover phase where people are fatigued, that's the number one uh, symptom, but also some of the premonitor symptoms can repeat after, and that period can go on for days, but also maybe just a few hours. And then in one third of the migraineurs, you have leading after the premonitory phase, just shortly before the pain phase, a 30 minute or so aura phase when you get all these sensory disabilities. That's only a third of migraines. And maybe it's important to say that all of these four phases can happen independent of each other. So you can have an aura phase without any of the other phases. You can have a premonitory phase, be fatigued for three days without the headache phase actually starting. So all of these can happen without each other, but typically they would come in sequence as we discussed. Migraine also goes far beyond those physical symptoms. Migraine means loss, loss of control over your life, loss of friendships, loss of a job, loss of your family sometimes because they don't understand, you don't see migraine. Anyone who suffers from migraine will know that the pain also means a loss of uh, your life basically. So the presence of pain can lead to a loss of life and that's often completely overlooked. So. With a migraine, leading a normal life, if you have frequent migraines, is almost impossible. There's ethnic, national and gender factors to migraine as well, so women are affected two to three times as much as men. Uh, every seventh person in the world suffers from migraine, it's one billion people. But there's also a few ethnic uh, considerations to migraine. If you look across the globe, migraine actually affects every single society, it seems, and it, the frequency varies between 10 and 20 percent depending on culture. Migraine is actually the third most common of all diseases in the world and the number one neurological disease. And when it comes to years lost to disability, migraine is actually the number one leading cause of disability in people under 50. And it still does not get a lot of attention, which is uh, very sad. When it comes to economic costs for society, those are also massive. 
indirect and direct medical costs for migraine is over 100 billion euros in Europe alone. And it will also be more expensive in the US, so those costs are adding up. Migraine can be considered a spectrum disorder. That means that those clinical characteristics are actually on a scale, not categorical. So they will vary from episodic migraine on one hand, all the way to chronic migraine on the other hand. Chronic migraine is having 15 days or more of migraines per month or headache days, out of which at least eight days must, must meet these migraine criteria that we have outlined earlier. You know from your biological course that susceptibility to migraine is uh, determined by genetic factors as anything else is and that makes it subject to the forces of natural selection so in biology you might have learned that any trait that does not help you to make offspring will die out over the period of time but something that is affecting 15 percent of the world's population and has still been passed on so the underlying genotype of migraine does that really seem to be an accident of nature? It's far more likely that migraine, a migraine prone nervous system, at least must have been associated with an evolutionary advantage. As you know, migraine affected me personally, and I was a chronic migraine patient having over 20 days of a month severe migraine. And you can only take painkillers, tryptans, and other analgesics on up to 10 days a month to not get medication overuse headache or also to not get addicted or um, kill your liver in the process. So here you see, um, these are my personal impressions of what migraine felt like for me. And uh, I got some resonance that for many other people, this is actually also what migraine feels like. Now the problem often is in anything that you can't see, it's very hard to make it understandable for other people. Hence the drawings and this video. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of Kilosis.